Welcome, fellow entrepreneurs, to the Amazon Sellers School Podcast, where we talk about Amazon Wholesale and how you can use it to build an e commerce empire, a side hustle, and anything in between. And now, your host, Todd Welch. What other tips would you have for people who are looking to hire either their first VA or maybe their 10th VA? Yeah, I mean, start small, right? Like one of my favorite things, if you're an Amazon seller, this might not apply, but B2B, like we have a podcast outreach formula that's really popular. It's a great task to start hiring a VA for because like what's the worst thing that can happen? You just don't get on some podcast, but the, a lot of good things can happen. You can learn how to hire people. You can learn how to set expectations. You can learn how to give feedback. You can be less scared to delegate and build some trust and that'll give you some confidence. So for me, find tasks in your business that that you can hire for that are low risk, that if it doesn't work out, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to set you back months and start there and build up, hire a VA for five hours a week. And you're going to learn so much from that process. I mean, obviously, if you want to skip the learning curve and grab our system, go to outsource school, but start small, build up. And I mean, no one just wakes up and hires 14 people like you. you we all start somewhere and, and build up from there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's always a learning experience. You're always improving, things like that. Do you have any particular tools that you like to use for when you're managing your VAs? Yeah. I mean, we use ClickUp, we use Slack, we use Zoom, um, we use LastPass, we use a, a billing tool called Clockify. Pretty standard, like nothing too crazy there. Um, I know some people go really heavy with their tech stack. We've always kept it fairly simple, and even like our bookkeeping business, Econ Balance, we uh, we use ClickUp because there's a lot of going on and a lot of processes. Um, we've gotten by with Google Docs. When we sold free up, we had. 50 pages of SOPs in Google Docs and that worked and it was totally fine. So I wouldn't overcomplicate it. You can build as you go there. For, for me, simpler is better. Don't only use tools if you're going to actually use them um, and they add a lot of benefit to your company. Yeah. Sometimes tools can actually make things more difficult, and more complicated when you could have just done it in a Google Doc for sure. I know exactly. I've, I've played around with some SOP software thinking, you know, it's going to be the holy grail for your SOPs. And sometimes it's just simpler to do it in Google Docs or spreadsheet or something like that. Got so, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you want to say off of that, if we want to talk about failed businesses, Connor and I tried building an SOP software and, and that's one that like didn't work out. There just isn't that big of a market for it. Um, and like Google Docs, like I said, is, is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We can dive into that real quick if you want. No, I mean, hear about people's failures because they're not really failures, right? Learning experiences. Right, exactly. I mean, we have a great developer. He built the free up marketplace. He was part of the exit. It worked out well for us, worked out well for them, um, et cetera. Um, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> like we, we just built the software as like an add on for outsource school. Again, minimal viable product. It's not like we put in $500,000 into this software and we, we put a few grand behind it. We tested it out. We got people's feedback and the feedback was pretty much like, like you. You said it just was unnecessary nice to have a little extra hassle for people and there just wasn't a market and we ended up selling it back to the developer and made outsource school just what it is today without the software and people still love outsource school and you just move on so, mm -hmm. th th so that's why i'm a big fan of just minimum viable product with with free up well with drop shipping even going back farther I drop ship five products and I, I even told my my dad, um, I said, hey, if like I get bad reviews for this or something happens, I'll stop drop shipping. I didn't call it drop shipping, but I'll stop this business model and, and move on to something else. With free up, we gave people free hours. If they hated it or fired all their VAs, we would have moved on to something else. I mentioned Simply SOP, uh, the, the, the software for, for SOPs. Outsource School, we, we sold this course. If everyone hated it, we were just gonna refund it bookkeeping we gave all these people two free months of bookkeeping if they didn't stick on we would have moved on next business true seo we're starting right now we just gave people our beta clients some extra free articles in the first month and if they don't like it or the seo service doesn't perform which we are confident will but you never know again we're going to move on to something else making sure that we're not screwing every anyone over and that everyone's happy with us and that we keep their relationships intact so that's kind of the only way that, that we do business and it's it's why even though I'm an entrepreneur or whatever, um, I don't consider myself a, a big risk taker because I'm always t really testing something before I'm investing a lot of time and effort into it. 
Yeah, minimum viable product. That's an uh, important thing to, to keep in mind, especially in today's world where things change so quickly, uh, just to be able to test ahead of time to see what's going to work. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.